What's going on guys, Billy here, and today we're going to be walking through the entire process of creating a 3D model with your drone using Drone Deploy. Now I've had a lot of clients specifically ask for these 3D models delivered alongside their high resolution 2D map, and I've done single family homes like this one right here. In fact, this was the first 3D model I ever created. I could have done a little bit of a better job. I think I ended up taking like 700 photos, but I've also done massive shopping centers like this one right here. It turned out to be anywhere between 26 to 2700 photos it looks great in my opinion and you may have seen this teased over on social media if you follow me on Instagram and Twitter a lot of you wanted to know how to create a 3d model so here is that video all right so the first thing that we've got to do is create a 2d map of the area which I went over in detail in a previous video and I did that first as it's sort of like a stepping stone to move on to 3d modeling if you want to watch that first portion to learn how to create a 2d map go ahead and click on the link in the top right corner or down in the description now the example that we'll be using in this video Video is this smaller structure but you can't see it on the tablet as this is new construction and Google Maps and Apple Maps have not been updated now once we finish the 2d mission we'll have all the necessary top-down images needed to put together our 3d model there is one thing I'd recommend turning on during that 2d mission and that is structures mode you'll notice that once I turn it on the perimeter of the mission becomes highlighted in green now instead of just automatically taking top-down photos the drone will take photos with the gimbal pitch downwards around the edges to fill in the side of the structure. So after the drone deploy mission has been run and we've got all the photos on our SD card, a lot of people would just say, I'm done, I'm going to upload it to drone deploy and let it process, but I'd like to take it a step further and manually orbit around the entire structure on my own to capture even more angles. By flying closer to the structure, we can get into the nooks and crannies, which will result in a much more realistic looking model. The best method that I've found to do this is by selecting time shot from the photo settings and selecting the lowest time interval. So for me, it's going to be two seconds. This allows you to focus on orbiting and keeping the structure in frame while the drone continues to take the photos for you. As you'll see, the transmission is a little bit choppy when shooting all these photos, so I'd recommend having a good view of your drone or to have a spotter. Just to give you guys a few tips when doing this step, first of all, be sure to shoot your photos in JPEG as you can't upload raw DNG photos to drone deploy. Also, I like to keep all of my camera settings in auto, the white balance and the exposure, just because it saves you a lot of headaches. Another helpful thing to know is that you do not want to get the sky in the photo at all. It'll totally ruin your map. Trust me, I've done it before, and it affects parts of the stitching that you wouldn't even expect. It kind of turns your 3D model into mush. They preach this throughout the forums as well, so the general consensus is to keep your gimbal pitched downwards at like a 30 to 60 degree angle, and you should be good. You don't even really have to get the entire structure in the frame. You can get up close, and it will help the quality of your model tremendously. The final quick tip for capturing these side photos is to orbit at different altitudes. I usually like to make two passes around, so one, just above the structure and then one a little bit lower almost below the roof line from there i focus on any areas i think need a little bit more attention and a little bit more capturing all right so now that we've captured every single angle of that firehouse under construction it's time to process all those images and create our 3d model now we use drone deploys application to shoot our photos to get those top down images and some of the perimeter shots but now we're going to use drone deploys web application to stitch together all of those photos once on drone deploys website we want to select the plus sign from the bottom of the menu on the left and then select upload images once our project is named and the files have been selected they will go through a quick processing stage now from this screen right here we want to make sure that we select structures as our map type which might take a little bit longer to process but will make our model look a lot better than if we were to just select terrain now pretty much all that's left to do is wait for the images to upload and for the map to process on drone deploys server so just for comparison's sake i created three separate models one will be with just top-down photos Photos. One will be with top-down photos and the other photos taken automatically through drone deploy using structures mode. So that's with the gimbal pitched down just a little bit. Uh, and then the final version will include everything from the top-down photos to the photos I took manually by orbiting. So this right here, this monstrosity that you guys have been looking at is with 2D photos only. And it kind of filled in this wall all right right here. But if we were, as my computer is a little bit slow here. If we were to whoop, zoom in all the way over here, look at this side of the building. It's just not there. It's totally non-existent. So only uploading top-down 
2D images, I guess, is not gonna give you the best result. It kind of gives you the elevation right here of the different roof levels, but again, it's really just not a viable option. So if we go on to the next example, this one right here was taken with the perimeter photos. We could see that it does a really good job at filling in the walls, but it kind of messes up right here with the more finite details, kind of with this like tower and then also the higher walls. Also, I do wanna point out over here that these garage doors kind of look a little bit blurry and this door right here looks a little bit warped. So while this looks good, I wouldn't want to deliver this to a client. Now, again, remember, I took another one by manually orbiting around this only one time. I said that I usually like to do it twice, but I only went around one time, shot some photos, and this is what I was left with. This right here is, in my eyes, one of the best 3D models I've made. Right here is pretty much the proof you can see the entire structure on the top, that tower, I guess. Um, then also you can see these little walls they have built up. You can see the AC units on the top of the building pretty well uh, in their actual shape. And then also if we scroll over to here, these doors look pretty good. We've got a little bit of warping underneath the here. Um, and then I guess, you know, these ones over here, these garage doors look great. Something I do is I'd actually shoot this. And then if a client was upset, say, oh, I wanted those doors to look a little bit better. I'd go back, I'd shoot that little area again Again, or any part that need to be fixed. And then I could actually upload more photos to this drone deploy mission. So I can make this model better in the future if I wanted to. But this one right here is obviously the clear winner. Being able to orbit around for, you know, 10 minutes, take some photos here and there, making sure that everything looked perfect really does give you the best result. In case you guys are wondering how to view your model from the drone deploy website, all we have to do from our map is select model from the side menu bar, and it will allow us to play around with what we've created. To zoom in, we use the upward scroll function of of our mouse to do so and then to zoom out we simply scroll downwards to rotate and fully manipulate the mat we hold control while dragging our mouse around this will let you view every aspect of the model in terms of export functionality, we can save this model into a .obj file, which is then able to be 3D printed. So theoretically, you could turn whatever you shoot into a small 3D model. I've had my friend Brian try this out with a few of the models I've created, and I won't lie, it's not that bad. I think that I need to work on capturing better angles on my part for this to look a little bit better next time that I try. The final example that I want to show you guys is of a site that I mapped filled with stockpiles. For this mission, I only took top-down photos. I didn't turn on structures mode, I didn't take any manual photos from orbiting, and when I switch over to see the model, it looks pretty damn good considering what we got earlier from drone deploy when we only added those top-down photos. The stockpiles are accurately shown, and the buildings and machinery don't look that bad either, but if this client actually wanted a 3D model, then I would have taken the time to fill in the model with some photos taken of the sides of the buildings and of the stockpiles. This right here is actually a little sneak peek at a video I'm working on that will show you how to use drone deploy to accurately measure stockpiles. So if that's something you're interested in, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. So guys, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Be sure to check out the first portion, the 2D map creation. If you're kind of a little bit lost as to how to do that, I'll leave that link down in the description. That is definitely something important to do before capturing your 3D model. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. And as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.